Welcome to Emov's Entrepreneur Zone. Today I've got Zizipo with me from Emiso Ceramics. Welcome. Thank you very much. Tell us a bit about your business. Well, um, the name of the business is Emiso Ceramics. It was established in 2006 and we started as a group of uh, five friends. Um, four of them uh, were uh, from uh, Port Elizabeth Technicon. That's where we met and uh, we moved to Cape Town and this is where we had the idea of starting the business. And it was easy for us to decide because we had the creative background, which was art and design. Uh, the three of us were creatives, basically, yeah. And the name, it's a lovely name. Well, Imiso in, in Kosa means uh, many tomorrows. And uh, we had the dream uh, to work for today for a better tomorrow and definitely to secure a great, uh, a great future for our, our children. And the business model, it's, um, you've got retail space and then you also distribute? Yes, we actually have a combination of the office, um, we also have the gallery and uh, the production space in one. And uh, we supply a lot of galleries uh, locally and internationally. And um, yeah. And when you started out, how did you get your name out there? How did you make those initial contacts? When we started out, the location was uh, the main uh, big player. We were uh, based at the old biscuit mill. We still are based at the old biscuit mill. And um, uh, fortunately, they had done a lot of marketing. And so it was easy for us to uh, have access to the type of market th that they were uh, inviting. And that was exactly the same target market for us. And then to get your, your where sold internationally, how did you go about that? Yes, um, from there we actually got discovered by a lot of uh, media um, uh, houses. We had Top Billing who featured us and we had um, a lot of uh, deco magazines that showcased our work and um, also we took part in exhibitions uh, locally and internationally. And uh, the business has grown over the, the eight years that you've been involved in it? Yes, it has, it has. Um, we started as um, about four people, and now we up to eight people, including um, the directors. And yeah, definitely it has grown, and uh, this, uh, the, the place where we're based in is, is a perfect space for it as well. And it's a difficult balance between a creative side and a business side. Well, it was in the beginning. Um, as time goes on, you get kind of get uh, used to it. And I'm basically the one who does um, both of, of, of the running and uh, the creative side. My business partner mostly does the production work. Within, within the business, yes. how are the ro roles divided out? Um, how many people have you got on the creative side and on yes. the production side? Yes. We currently have two uh, art, uh, assistants in the production side. And uh, we have um, now three on sales and marketing and there's two of us as the directors, so we all play a part. You started out with a number of partners um, and as now yourself and one partner yeah, left. Yeah. What do you put down as the key to building and, and keeping such a strong relationship over the years? Yes, uh, we, we have a great relationship. Um, we've been friends uh, for quite some time and when we started the business, we, we definitely shared uh, the same vision. And uh, also, um, it's also very important uh, for each one of us to uh, acknowledge our, our differences and also recognize them as valuable. This is a creative industry. Where do you get your inspiration and make sure that you, you're still producing what the market is looking for? In my uh, collection, I get very much inspired by um, my uh, design background. I love beautiful textiles. I love fashion, patterns, and color. So in most cases, I see a lot of that. Uh, in most times, I see a lot of that in, uh, around me. And, and the other side is obviously the production. So you need to make sure that there's, there's no wastage and, and that kind of yes. stuff. And how do you, how do you manage yes. that with the creative side? Well, the idea of combining all of that in one place was to oversee um, that everything can uh, go well. So it's easier for me to check down what's happening and uh, I can also run the business, yeah, at the same time. And you also have to have a retail um, side yes. that you've got to be able to sell. Yes, yes. Um, is that a skill that you've, you've developed over time? Yes, I actually have um, an experience in, in retail. I worked before we started the business. I had to look for something to keep me going before the business started. So I have basically have a, I've, I've a year experience in, in sales and that has really um, worked for, uh, on, our, on our side, yes. The, with the international um, work that you do, mm -hmm. um, how do you build the relationships with uh, 
galleries mm -hmm. that are that are far away and and how do you correspond with them yes yes it's via internet of course it's uh, emails um but we also have a distributor that connects with them which makes uh, things much easier for us but uh, mainly it's it's via uh, email yeah. and you, you're based in cape town and this year it's the design capital yes how is that influencing your your business well it's exciting but we've had, had a lot of, of media attention um a lot of uh, internationally basically and uh, a lot of um, we also got featured in in New York Times which was the best thing ever for us yes and we still hope to see more things happening and do you see a, an uptick in sales when you get featured in, in one of those yes things? definitely we've ha we're dealing with a lot of inquiries and uh, yes it's looking good and uh, how does the process work how long does it take from a concept through to it being on the store shelf well it takes about two weeks to have uh, products finished. Of course, you're not working on one piece, you're working maybe on several pieces. And um, the process then starts from making the piece from uh, clay, from a wet piece of clay, and it has to dry, it takes a day. And then from there, you have to uh, fire it. That's another process. And from uh, firing, you can then be able to paint it and fire again. So we have two firing processes. And after that, then the, the product's out. Yes. And are all the products that you create bespoke, or do you have a line that is repeated? 90% or, 90, well, I say 95% is bespoke. We've tried to do the, the repeats, uh, but we outsource that kind of production. Um, your business has developed over the, the eight years. How have you grown your brand with it? Yes, I can say that when we started out, definitely uh, we were not so sure. We, we had the logo, we had, we had an idea of how we wanted it to look like, but it has changed as the time goes on. And we've definitely made sure that the quality of the product does um, ju do justice to, to the brand. And also the, um, to set ourselves apart from everyone else is, is then to uh, create that unique product that, that nobody else can find anywhere. One of the difficulties with your type of product range is how do you price? Pricing, it was um, not easy, but we kind of uh, measured from the time that we spent in each piece. And also because uh, we had a background uh, where we were also working in a, in a studio where they were making similar style of, uh, not, a, not what we did, but the kind of art pieces that we were also doing. And so we kind of measured from how they did their pricing. And, and from there we took it up to obviously an, another level as the years go by and there's a demand was also coming through. And presumably as you start to get featured more and, and yes. then it allows you to put a premium on. Yes, but we don't just do it because we've been featured. It, it takes some time, yeah. And obviously, each and every year, we, we then consider uh, increasing the prices just like everyone else would. Going back to your, your brand, yes. um, a big part of the brand is the actual pieces and the style that you guys yes. have. How important is what goes into the, the product in, in developing your brand? Yes, it's very important. Uh, when we started, we actually had... Um, we could create anything at any time and we then realized uh, there was interest in, in a specific style so we had to refine that that kind of style and uh, currently we have now four collections which in the beginning we would have never thought we would package it in that way. To start this type of business requires a capital investment. How did you go about raising funding? We had to loan from family members and friends and uh, fortunately um, that was just for the beginning and, and, and soon after that the business was able to carry itself uh, from uh, making taking part in, in exhibitions uh, locally. There was a lot of interest so we were able to secure a lot of orders and since then it's been able to carry itself without any financial assistance. And do you tend to work to orders or do you make and then sell? We make and sell. I can say uh, 70% we make and sell and 30% is orders. And then I presume there's a difficulty there that you can sit with a lot of cash tied up in, in inventory? Because of the size of the business, um, we're not in a massive space. we basically in a like 74 square meters, so we don't have space to store anything in excess, basically. And yeah, so we, what we do is we make and we sell and it kind of moves is, yeah, we replace once it's sold. We don't keep stock, basically. You, you've been in the business now for eight years. It's grown, it's developed, you've been featured internationally. What's next for you? 
Wow, the sky is the limit. We definitely want to spread our wings. We want to be uh, in museums all over the world. And uh, the government is, is giving us a lot of support in that, so we can see it's, it's going to happen, yes. That brings us to the rapid fire questions. What's the best advice you've ever received? Best advice is that patience is the mother of success. And your best moment as an entrepreneur? To be featured on New York Times. And your biggest mistake? Biggest mistake was to sign a five-year lease uh, for a retail space, and it was a new building altogether. What inspires you as a small business owner? It is a satisfaction from the customers that leave our gallery happy. And what does an entrepreneur need to succeed? They need dedication, commitment, and um, passion. What do you look for in people that you work with? Openness, I think, and um, being honest as well, yeah. What would you do differently? Differently, maybe I would have done a business course in the beginning, just, in the, just soon before I started, even if it was a short course. What makes South Africa a great place to be a small business owner? It's to get a lot of support from the government. It makes um, us very proud to be seen internationally and they definitely playing a big part in, in showcasing our work overseas. What keeps you awake at night? Planning my next day. And what gets you going in the morning? Looking forward to new clients, meeting new people, and running my business. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And thank you. We look forward to the coming weeks. We will bring you further South African entrepreneurs. I'm Paul Hobden. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>